Welcome to Mixed Videos Online 2023. Subscribe now. Welcome to Top 5 Best Animated Transformers Fight Scenes Compilation. If why are new to the channel don't forget to subscribe, like and share. Being a protector of both humankind and Autobots, Optimus is a firm believer in freedom and equality among himself and his human allies. Because of the younger race, he firmly they never once will harm a human being, immediately shooting down Einheit's plan to hurting Judy and Ron Witwicky. However, Megatron sees this as a form of weakness and some of his comrades believe them to be a destructive race. Optimus does notice this but they were a young species and weren't so different than the Autobots when the race was young. He has seen the goodness in humanity, possibly referring to Michaela and Sam. However, as time went on, Optimus realized some humans were just as vile as a Decepticon could be. He would only harm a human or Decepticon in self-defense or that of a friend. He killed James Savoy, an agent from Cemetery Wind when he was threatening Kate Yeager and protected the man's daughter Tessa Yeager. Once Optimus cements a sense of friendship and comradeship with an individual, he will become undyingly loyal towards them. Despite barely knowing Spike and his father, Spike, Optimus saved them from drowning. This case can also be seen with his relationships towards his fellow Autobots, such as showing it towards a sea when he refused to abandon her after being stranded in a frozen tundra from Transformers of Prime. He is in love with the Cybertronian leader one, his love interest. Both are very affectionate with one another and cannot live without the other. Prime is very loyal to those he considers friends, often acting as a mentor, father figure to a younger generation of Autobots and humans. He especially sees Bumblebee as a surrogate son, reminiscing with Kate about a time when Bumblebee acted like a rebellious teenager in Age of Extinction. In the 2007 That's film adaptation, Go. Optimus snarled at Sector 7 agents for taking Sam Witwicky, the boy he and the Autobots were protecting and mercilessly attacking Decepticons that abducted Sam and his friends, Michaela Baines and Leo Smith. The young Lisa Fairborn, a human woman, viewed Optimus like a father figure when she was a child and later developed romantic feelings for him, which were apparently reciprocated. Optimus can live for thousands of years. However, he can still be killed if his spark is damaged. However, it can be temporary, as the Matrix of Leadership immediately revived him when Sam Witwicky used it to bring him back to life. Grimlock. Before time began, there was the key. We know not where it comes from, only that it holds the power to create worlds and fill them with life. That is how our race was born. For a time, we lived in harmony, but like all great power, some wanted it for good, others for evil. And so began the war, a war that ravaged our planet until it was consumed by death, and it was lost in the far reaches of space. We scattered across the galaxy, hoping to find it and rebuild our home, searching every star, every world. And just when all hope seemed lost, the message of a new discovery drew us to an unknown planet called Earth. But we were already too late. Original Generation 1 Continuity Nemesis Prime and Optimus Prime were two separate characters. Nemesis was actually Optimus Prime. His Generation 1 counterpart is one of the few adaptations to be few good. Bumblebee was the only Transformers live-action movie to not have Prime as the Transformer protagonist. The way Optimus saved Sam Witwicky in 2007's Transformers was inspired by how Superman ah, saved Lois Lane in the 1978 bad. film. For the live-action series, the creators based Prime's movements and characteristics off of Liam Neeson. Notably doesn't speak in contractions and is very formal when he is talking. Optimus was put under mind control by his creators but his mind was restored by a sun figure. In the fifth film, he was broken out of Princess's control due to hearing Bumblebee's voice for the first time in six million years. In the original series, Hot Rod broke Optimus out of the Quintessence mind control by returning the Matrix of Leadership to him. Optimus has fired flame design painted on him, a trait he shares with Rodimus Prime, his successor in the original cartoon series. Peter Cullen voices Optimus, as he does in the original series and later other Transformers-related media, such as Transformers Prime. Like the 1986 film, in Revenge of the Fallen, Optimus is killed by Megatron. However, both versions of his death is only temporary. In the film, Optimus is resurrected by Sam Witwicky with the Matrix of Leadership. 
In the original series, Prime was brought back to life by the hostile species called the Cortessans, albeit under their control. However, he was broken out of by Hot Rod after returning the Matrix back to Optimus. Ironically, the Matrix played some role in Optimus' return. The Decepticons are the antagonists of the series. They are typically concerned with such things as conquering Cybertron, defeating the Autobots, amassing large quantities of Energon, developing powerful weaponry, and beating people up. Not necessarily in that order. Unlike the Autobots, whose leader is a fine but Matrix, the Decepticons are led by the most powerful of their ranks. This tends to cause some conflict, given how generally every Decepticon thinks that they're the most powerful. Also, the Decepticons are not exactly the most compassionate beings in the universe, but not all fight for greed. More than a few have a sense of honor, while others believe that Cybertron would be better protected by aggressive expansion. Two of their ships are known as the city-sized Decepticon starship called the Nemesis and the Rectar Harbinger. Kayan is also a Decepticon-controlled city-state at the southern hemisphere of Cybertron. We have the Decepticons on the back panel. Megatron, Megatron, is, in many ways, a fallen hero. He rose up from the oppressed lower working castes of Kayan to become a champion in the region's illegal deathmatches, Megatronus, Megatoranesu, who named himself after one of the original 13 primes. He called for an end to Cybertron's decrepit caste system and told the downtrodden that freedom of self-determination was the right of all sentient beings. But absolute power corrupts absolutely, and Megatron's Decepticon revolution, like many such movements, ended up becoming a whole new tyranny. Powerful, charismatic, violent, and full of rage for any who would stand in the way of his ambition and drive, Megatron brought Cybertron past the brink of destruction. Now he and his former brother-in-arms Optimus Prime fight on other worlds. Megatron will never forgive Optimus for betraying him, stealing from the Council the rank of Prime which was rightfully his. He is reserved for his old friend the greatest honor possible, glorious death at his hands. Megatron has been gone for three years, but now he's returned. He's brought the monstrous Dark Energon to Earth, and quite possibly left his sanity in space. Spending countless cycles in the gladiatorial pits of Kayan taught Megatron that only the strong survive. Megatron secretly assembled an army of Decepticons in order to launch an attack for control of the planet Cybertron. Having used Dark Energon to power his troops, Megatron now looks to defeat the Autobots. His vehicle mode is a Cybertronian jet and does not have an Earth-based vehicle mode because he believes that Earth-style forms are beneath him, preferring to hold on to his frequently changed Cybertronian forms. Megatron is fierce and cruel. He will manipulate others to his advantage and will hurt those who oppose him or get in his way. He is seen as a megalomaniac tyrant who is obsessed with defeating Optimus Prime and saving Cybertron and restoring it to its former glory as he calls it. Despite him being a warlord with an insatiable taste for power and control he is shown to also be tolerant and honorable. In some cases, he can be merciful at times shown when Starscream commits treason against Megatron by attempting to kill and overthrow him, instead of Megatron killing him right away, he just gets the slag beaten out of him as punishment. In the waning years of the Golden Age of Cybertron, Megatronus, who named himself after one of the original 13 Primes, was a gladiator who fought in the Kayan Arena. Observing a disparity in freedom among the classes of his race, and that the ruling class was corrupt and all-powerful, Megatron turned rhetorician, trying to effect change. In drawing attention to this inequity, he inspired a whole of records Clark named Orion Pax, and the two joined forces to end corruption and bring equality to the masses. Orion and Megatronus became close allies, almost like brothers. Megatronus shortened his name to Megatron before he and Orion Pax appeared before the High Council. Megatron threatened the Council, promising to overthrow them and instate himself as the next Prime, a declaration of hostility that shocked Orion, and moved him to an impassioned speech in favor of autonomy that successfully swayed the Council where Megatron had failed. Jealous, Megatron left the Council and Orion behind and assembled his followers, including perennial loyalist Soundwave and scheming second-in-command Starscream, into an army he would name Decepticons, beginning the war for Cybertron and vowing to find the Matrix of Leadership which was denied to him by the Council. The war saw Megatron successfully take the city of Kayan, which contained the very arena he fought in as a gladiator, as the Decepticon capital. During a battle at Tiger Pax, Megatron crushed the Autobot Bumblebee's voice box when a scout refused to break under interrogation. 
Furthermore, Megatron's wartime achievements were not limited to those achieved through might. He also created the deadly Cybonic Plague which wiped out millions and found a way to weaponize Toxien which he used to wipe out an entire unit in front of a horrified bulkhead. It was through similarly poisonous means that Megatron came closest to seizing victory in the war's final stages, infecting the core of Cybertron itself. In purifying the core, Orion was granted the Matrix Megatron had long sought, becoming Optimus Prime. After his assassin Skyquake failed to kill Optimus at the Battle of Technoha, Megatron became obsessed with the Autobot leader and decided that destroying him was his right line. Eventually, the wall left Cybertron in ruin and forced the whole Transformer race to exile into space. Megatron would not leave the planet unguarded and placed a few insect icon guards in Starseas on the planet, should the enemy return. In time, Megatron and his army arrived on Earth, establishing mines to collect the Energon that the planet had been seeded with during the war. He also had some of his best warriors, such as Skyquake to guard deposits either not ready to mine. After some early conflicts on the planet, Megatron withdrew to space to search for more troops, leaving Starscream in charge. Starscream was Megatron's right hand and a secondary antagonist in Transformers Prime. He dreams of seizing leadership of the Decepticon faction for himself, and has even succeeded on a few occasions, only to have it taken away by Megatron. Though not physically powerful by Cybertronian standards, Starscream is arguably more dangerous than Megatron as he is power hungry, egotistic, cowardly, paranoid, unpredictable and willing to kill on sight even if it includes his own men. Starscream's role in the series often changed from time to time. He is also noted for being the first and only Decepticon to have permanently killed a member of Team Prime without hesitation. During Arcee's battle with Arachna, she was worked up and soon to be killed. However, Starscream intervened by firing at Arachnid and stayed behind with Arcee after she escaped from the scene. Starscream recollected that in a similar scene she allowed him to live and was expected by Arcee to kill her. However, Starscream merely cut her loose and told her to consider them even before walking off. Red Energon Starscream used a computer at his base and went through several pictures, one of which being a monkey. During his search, he discovered the humans had uncovered Red Energon. Counting his apex armor along with it, Starscream concluded that he would be both stronger and faster. Starscream arrived at the location of the transported Red Energon and found Autobots Optimus Prime, Bumblebee and RC. He demanded they surrender the Energon to him before he placed the apex armor on his chest, suited up and claimed to have no problem with fighting for it. Starscream initially had no difficulty in fighting the three, but soon was met with a surprise in the form of Smokescreen. After the two of them exchanged comments, Starscream asked Smokescreen if he had any last words. Smokescreen had full, kiss your armor goodbye. Using the face shifter, Smokescreen killed the shot Starscream out of the apex armor. Starscream snatches a chunk of Red Energon and destroyed the rest in an attempt to destroy the other Autobots. The destruction of the Autobot base. As Starscream stood alongside Megatron, he continued to watch for Optimus' decision on whether or not to save the humans. During the standoff, Starscream tapped on Jack's glass container and was eager to open it and kill the human. Eventually, Optimus Prime decided that their human allies were a necessity and willingly traded them for the Omega Keys, with Starscream handing RC an imprisoned Jack. After successfully retrieving the humans, Optimus Prime destroyed the Omega Lock and retreated to Earth. In the wake of the destruction, Starscream smacked fellow Decepticon Knockout and urged him to tend to Megatron, whom had his stolen Prime arm sliced off. He went with the other Decepticons to Earth, where he happily transformed into his jet mode and lead the Vehicons against the Autobots. As Autobot Wheeljack arrived on the scene, he managed to shoot the ladder down and claimed that his shooting was how one could wreck a wrecker. Following the Autobots' retreat from their base, Starscream joined Megatron in viewing the ruins of the destroyed base and stated that it was the place before Megatron corrected his tense as past instead of present. As the two viewed its ruins, Starscream proclaimed that their united front against the separated Autobots would result in their victory. Starscream was put in charge of hunting for Autobots. To do so he interrogated Wheeljack and had Soundwave monitor global communications. Eventually, Soundwave found Jack and Starscream sent two Vehicons to go and kill him and RC. This only resulted in Laserbeak being knocked offline. Starscream's past would haunt him as it turned out Shockwave had survived. Starscream then had to share his rank. He was still second in command for all military operations, Shockwave was second in command for all science projects. 
desperate, Stars Crane tried using the human internet to find potential leads on Autobots, which only led to embarrassing him. He later allowed Wheeljack to escape, so that when Wheeljack met the other Autobots, the Armada would kill them. However, Wheeljack found a tracking device and lured the Armada into a trap to kill them. Later, Shockwave unveiled a Predacon. When it returned empty-handed from its Autobot hunt, Starscream mocked it, creating a new enemy. Starscream sent Venicons to take care of Jack and Miko when they showed up on different sides of the country and all the insect icons when an Enagon mine was under attack. However, these were all traps laid by Autobots to reduce the numbers of the Decepticon army. When Megatron realized Starscream had left the Harbinger systems fully operational and unsecured Starscream ordered his Seeker Armada to destroy the Harbinger. Before they could launch Darkmount came under attack and Starscream coordinated an aerial defense, which resulted in most of his flies being horribly killed. Shockwave then offered to release the Predacon. Starscream was quite pleased when the Predacon was ground bridged away by the Autobots. The Decepticons then captured all the invaders and Starscream found they were being led by Ultra Magnus and that Optimus Prime was not present. After Prime did show up the battle ended with Starscream ordering a full retreat as Darkmount was destroyed and the Nemesis was relaunched. Beast Hunters When it looked like the Decepticons were about to embark on another scavenger hunt, Starscream was dismayed, but fortunately it turned out that Shockwave had microchipped all his creations, and the fossils they needed would be easy to find. Following the surprise return of the existing Predacon, Starscream was dismayed to find it put in his charge. He had immense trouble controlling the beast and resorted to using the Apex armor to protect himself from its attacks. Megatron sent Starscream and the Predacon to Scotland, where they found the Autobots had destroyed a team of Decepticons hunting for bones there. While the Predacon took on the Autobots, Starscream found Nico trying to reach Magnus's ship and accidentally lost the Apex armor to her. Battle ensued, but when the Predacon left for the Nemesis, Starscream and his two Seekers found themselves outnumbered by Autobots and retreated. In Megatron's bad books again, Starscream was further inconvenienced when the Predacon damaged the ship's communication dish. Though he tried to have it repaired by the Vehicons, it didn't go so well, and Megatron eventually found out. Starscream found Knockout in the middle of experimenting with synthetic Enagon on CYLES, and had admitted their Dark Enagon to the mix, believing it would allow Megatron to control the results. Instead, the new mix transformed CYLAS into an Enagon sucking zombie and created a plague which resulted in Knockout and Starscream being chased through the ship. Confronted by Megatron, they were forced to admit what they had done and were sent to locate and destroy CYLAS. They eventually found he had already been dispatched, but to Starscream's dismay, the deed had been done by the recently freed Arachnid. Fortunately, he didn't have to deal with her as well, but he later had to face Megatron's wrath over his part in the affair. When Megatron took him to another abandoned mine, Starscream assumed his demise was near, but they were merely visiting Shockwave's off-site laboratory. The Predacon unexpectedly arrived and Starscream hit it with a metal pipe, only for it to transform and speak. The Decepticons quickly realized that despite Predacon's loyalty, it would not take him and his fellow Predacons long to realize their superiority to the Decepticons, so Starscream hatched a plan to kill two birds with one stone, luring the Autobots to the laboratory so its destruction could be blamed on them. The plan succeeded, and in the aftermath, the Decepticons discovered that the synthetic Enagon stored at the base had created Cybermatter. Starscream managed to talk his way out of being disfigured by Shockwave over not warning the latter that the Autobots were attacking the lab. As Shockwave was put in charge of perfecting the synthetic Enagon formula, Megatron assigned Starscream to gather technology to repair the Omega Lock, which they would need for a delivery mechanism. After establishing the location of the Autobot base when they kidnapped Ratchet, Starscream was sent with his armada to destroy the hangar. He did so with a plot, unaware that the Autobots had swapped the letters on the hangars and he destroyed the wrong one. The error came back to bite him when the Decepticons detected and probe carrying Laserbeak's transponder. Starscream went out and personally destroyed the probe before fleeing through a ground bridge to escape Optimus. Back on the Nemesis, when Predakin found out about the Decepticons' earlier treachery and went on a rampage, Starscream aided Megatron by blasting Predakin in the back. Though the Predacon was defeated, the ship next came under attack by Autobots. Starscream took his elite squad of flyers, which was now five or six bots, with him to defend the Omega Locks control station. Their battle was driven into the Omega Lock control room where Starscream tried to grab the Star Saber only to end up battling RC. He watched with glee as Megatron killed Bumblebee and watched with horror as Bumblebee killed Megatron. He promised to avenge his master, but Shockwave pulled him away. 
when the Nemesis reached Cybertron, Starscream and Shockwave made their way to the escape pods, only to find there was one left. They ended up having to share it with Starscream complaining about how cramped it was. Predacons rising. Starscream and Shockwave secretly worked together to desperately revive the Decepticons by attempting Project Predacon once more, Shockwave would clone the Predacon Skylinks and Darksteel as the first of their army, while Starscream was sent to found Predacon Bones. Starscream then came across the Predacon burial grounds and summoned Shockwave to follow. If you enjoyed the video please like share and subscribe and thanks for watching.